This podcast is brought to you by Men's Tea Clinic. Men's Tea Clinic is the team I trust with my total wellness optimization. So should you. Five DFW locations with North Frisco, El Dorado Parkway at Dallas North Tollway. Now open. Call 972-GO-MEN'S-TEA or visit mensteaclinic.com. Hi, I'm Gigi Gorgeous. I'm a YouTuber, model, actress, author, and host of Queerified, a new podcast I'm doing with my longest friend ever and BFF Mimi. Come listen every week as we talk to special guests in the LGBTQIA community and some allies too. This is a space that's safe for you. Please listen to and follow Queerified, available now for free on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. Good afternoon to you, John. How you doing? Hey, guys. I'm all right. How are you? Oh, we're doing good. Thanks. Enjoying the afternoon. Um, okay. At, at what point uh, during a slide... Is it a good idea for a manager to be publicly critical of players? Would, would, would you want to see that at some point, or do you think you're just always out on that? Um, interesting question. I, so I don't know that – first of all, I don't think a manager or a, or a coach whatever should ever say anything publicly that he hasn't already addressed privately. I don't think that the, the intent should be to communicate through the, the press uh, – I think repeating something that's been emphasized already or, um, you know, making clear that to the fans that, hey, like this message has been delivered and, and we are, you know, pushing down this path. I, I think that's absolutely appropriate. And I, actually, I think, I think Woody's comments here the last couple of weeks have, have you know, gone down that path. Um, but I, I don't ever think it's healthy to hope that a player is reading the headlines and is, is getting something from that. I think it's, that's our job is to communicate directly with the, with the guys. So how how do you balance that transparency with the public with you know being respectful of of your players philosophically? Well, I think it starts with you know there shouldn't be anything uh, that you're saying publicly, especially if you feel strongly about it that you haven't addressed internally first. I think it starts with with transparency with the players, you know, and communication with the players, and and letting them know the expectations, giving them really clear feedback. And when we try to do that, where it's, hey, these are the areas that you're, these are your strengths, and these are the areas that you're, you're struggling relative to, you know, you, you know, the expectations that that we laid out together at the beginning of the season are relative to the league average, or, you know, kind of what you've done in the past. And uh, this is how, you know. This is how uh, pitchers are attacking you. They, you know, you're struggling on these pitches or in these areas, and try to you know put a plan together. But I think until you've done that and given the players real clear feedback, um, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't want a guy to go public with it. Once a player understands what the goal is, absolutely. I think, I think the fans need to understand that you know we're not pleased with how things are going either. So JD on a six game losing streak and we knew there would be bumps in the road this season coming into the year. We knew that the win loss record wasn't going to be the end all be all. So in the midst of where you guys are right now, whether it's to the fans or internally, when you're looking for uh, the optimism, what do you see over the last week or two, whether it's an individual player, uh, something that someone is improving upon like what? What do you for the fan base? Like what do you point to and go? Well, this is good for us long term. Yeah, I mean, I think the the things that stand out, and I, um, I want to answer your question. I also don't want to sugarcoat it because the last few weeks, like you know, there have the, the positives have they're, they're there, but uh, not consistently enough for us to you know that, that I'm, I'm uh, you know trumpeting and looking to get overly excited about it. But you know, I think certainly Isaiah. His play on both sides of the ball, uh, Adolis uh, has, has been a clear positive. Uh, I think Eli White, the quality of his at bats and his athleticism, I think he's started at, at uh, three or four different positions since he's been up and had has had better at bats. I actually thought uh, he made the last out the other night, drove a ball the warning track. I thought he might have hit a, a game tying home run. Um, that's been a positive. Um, obviously, Kyle Gibson has been a big positive and. Uh, you know, I think our, our our catcher's defense has been a positive, but listen, if we're being totally truthful, like there haven't been enough, uh, they haven't been consistent here over the last you know month, really month plus. Uh, we, we got out to that start where 18 and 18, there was you know some optimism. Um, you know, guys were were swinging the bats, uh, we were scoring runs early, and uh, you know that has uh, that has dissipated, and uh, the quality of our bats needs to improve in general. I think that that's a, a big focus is that. You know, guys are our pitchers are able to attack us 
um, kind of the same way uh, and having the same results. And it's really on our group to to make an adjustment. And I, I, thought I, I should have I should have hit uh, Colby Allard. Colby Allard's yeah. been a been a, a big positive. He's been a, a early on here, but in, in the rotation, has been a, been very consistent in his outings. JD, I don't know if I'm going to get you in trouble for uh, asking this question or not. I'll, I'll try not to, but. You know, the the Rays are bringing up uh, Wanda uh, Franco, and I, mm-hmm. I wondered, you know, when you evaluated him, are you excited when somebody brings up or you see, like, say, the number one prospect or maybe some guy that you were in your scouting meetings, you were going, man, this guy is the real deal. Are you excited to see players like that just kind of from afar and see how that development goes? I am, man. I mean, I you get into this because you love the game. You're a fan of the game. You love uh, talented players. And, um, you know, I, listen, the reality is I, I, it, it hurts sometimes when, you, when, you watch, when your team is struggling. And, you know, but I still watch quick pitch. I still watch, you know, a lot of other games. And so when you see the things that, that you know, Jacob DeCrom's doing right now sure. or Otani, you guys, that's the ridiculous. And, you know, especially Otani is a guy that we were, you know, very interested in, and and, and you know, very uh, did a lot of work on. Or, you know, it's exciting to see these guys. And and Franco for, um, you know, I didn't see him as an amateur. A lot of our our guys did. Um, you know, ultimately Tampa, you know, did a good job and closed them out early, and and uh, you know, had, had real foresight to do so. But yeah, it's exciting when when you see the the top top guys come up. JD, who would you say, if you had a vote, is the American League MVP right now? Like Vladimir Guerrero, he was winning the Triple Crown. Now I think he's just behind in batting average. Or Shohei Otani, who is an incredible hitter. Oh, and he pitches. How do you even begin to figure out how people would vote on that? Yeah, you know, I, I haven't, um, I haven't done like enough work. I haven't looked to see what their actual, like, some of the, their underlying performances. I know they're both ridiculous. Just on the surface, I, it would be Otani. He's just doing something that like nobody's ever, you know, you haven't seen since. I mean, Babe Ruth, yeah, yeah. probably around right, you know ninety years. I mean, it's just insane. You may never see it again. Probably won't. And so, um, what, what Vladdy's doing is unbelievable. Um, you know, it's certainly an MVP caliber uh, start to the year for him, and you know, it's pretty impressive what he did with his body and, and, and his development. He got himself into great shape and all that, but uh, Otani is just doing something you literally have never seen before. Well, J.D., does that change the way then you evaluate? I mean, do you have to now, is there a special category for those kinds of guys maybe on your board? I, I know it's a rare player, but is it? do you have to now have a category for guys that are uh, multi-talented that way? Yeah, I mean, um, they definitely, I mean, we definitely talk about There's just so few of them, you kind of end up Talking about him or his individuals, I mean Brendan McKay came out of Louisville and, and Tampa took him in the first round, and uh, Michael Lorenz in Cincinnati took, you know, kind of a two-way guy, and and, and there are others. Um, you know, I remember uh, the first one I really remember was was, was uh, Brooks Kiechnik in uh, with with Milwaukee, and and he was like the last guy in the pen and the, the pinch hitter off the bench. You know, the former UT star. And, you know, so there there have been guys. Uh, over the years that have done it, but they're just, we don't spend a ton of time on it. Cause they're just, the, the Otanis are not just from a talent standpoint, from a durability standpoint, a workload man. I mean, that not just that he's capable of doing it, but then he does it every day and is staying healthy and, and durable doing it. It's unbelievable. It's John Daniels with you here on your home of the Rangers. We were talking about the dominance of Cole Wynn and Jamie Newberg's piece on him. When are we looking at him or or others? Is is that a, a late season thing or or is it beyond that before new blood starts to enter the, the big league clubhouse? No, I mean, so we called up, uh, you asked about Cole, but we, we, we called up Andy Abanez today and he's going to get a, an opportunity here and, and and uh, he's swinging the bat well. Kurt Terry, I think, is a guy that that's in the mix here uh, for a call up before too long. He's certainly pushing the envelope, and pushing us to consider him. Uh, that Double A starting staff, um, you know, Wynn and Kraus and Enriquez, Latz, Alexi, that whole group. Um, you know, they all could. Uh, uh, Yuri Rodriguez, the other one, they all could uh, push our hand here at some point, but. We're going to try to be patient with them, especially with starting pitching, and, and uh, give them time to develop and 
Um, you know, some of those guys may get a look this year. Some of them may be, you know, coming to camp next year and more of a factor in, in 22. How far away do you think the team is from, from being a, a strong contender for a playoff spot? I mean, moment in time, we've got a lot of work to do. And I, I'm, I'm not one to put a time frames on it or a calendar or anything like that. But, you know, we're, I mean, sitting here today, I mean, I, state the obvious where we are at 18 games back in the standing we got a lot of work to do before we can talk about that what kind of reception should elvis andrews get at the ballpark tonight uh, it should be all cheers i mean I, all cheers that I, I was a little disappointed that that we you know some some people uh in the stands booed odor when he was here i get it and they were frustrated in the last couple of years he struggled but this guy gave his all and uh, elvis same thing he, he brought not just uh uh you know, great play over the years, but uh, moved his family here, loved the community, had kind of a flair for dramatic and big spots, loved the spotlight, you know, was, was a, a critical part of our of our best team. So I, I hope it's a, a very, very positive ovation. J.D., I, I've been locked in on the on the College World Series, you know, since it got started this weekend. You know, a couple of teams unranked, North Carolina State, Virginia, people like that. Is there stuff that you – and I know you could say the big stage and you learn about these guys and stuff like that, but are there some players that you might not have looked at that are on these teams that all of a sudden they have a, a, a great College World Series and then we see them get drafted here? I, I think you could see that. Um, I, I do. Because I, I, it's kind of, you know, during the regular season, especially for a team that's supposed to be there, you know, I think the, a lot of the coaches are going to play their upperclassmen and, and, and their guys that have kind of helped them get there or the, the leaders on the team. And when it gets into these big spots, you know, the coaches are going to put their, their most talented guys and put sure. them in, in big spots. And so I, I do think you could see some guys move up a little bit, not, you know, probably not dramatically, you know, a guy's not going to go from off the radar to a you know top two or three round pick, but I do think you could, you know, see if a guy's made a major adjustment, and, and one of these coaches whose you know, only interest is winning puts them in in, uh, in a big position, and they deliver can only help them. JD, does the does the quality of the AA pitching staff we were just talking about does that factor into the decision of what you would do at number two in the draft, or are those two things independent? Mostly independent. Um, I, you know, I, I think the way that. Uh, so, with baseball, the way that it, you you really have to take like the best talent. If if, the, if a guy's there, that's just so clearly um, better than than the rest of the field. I, I don't think you draft on need in, in baseball. Um, you know, I think the positional factor is more just you know more about like scarcity and how easy it is to get certain spots for, and how challenging it is to, to fill others with impact players. But um, you know, just because we have some you know good prospects at Double A, so we wouldn't stray from a you know a pitcher in this case in the example you gave because you know the guys get hurt. There's a na- just a natural attrition of things, and uh, you can never have enough. John, thank you so much for your time and your insights into all things Rangers. Give them hell tonight. We'll be pulling for you. Thank you, guys. Hi, I'm Gigi Gorgeous. I'm a YouTuber, model, actress, author, and host of Queerified a new podcast I'm doing with my longest friend ever and BFF, Mimi. Come listen every week as we talk to special guests in the LGBTQIA plus community and some allies too. This is a space that's safe for you. Please listen to and follow Queerified, available now for free on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. For the ones finding new ways to ensure the job always gets done. For the ones wearing many hats. For the ones who are hands-on, even from far away. And the ones keeping business moving forward. We are Granger, Offering supplies and solutions for every industry. With 24-7 support and experienced staff at over 250 local branches. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done.